names that are difficult for me to pronounce. Uh, turn the uphill, I can say that one. Uh, okay, Harkiv says hi. Hi, Harkiv from Odessa. Hello, Odessa. Vinitsa. Hi, her son. Never been to her son, but I really want to go. Um, Harkiv, I've been there a couple of times. Very nice place. Lviv, lovely. Alexandria, you've got a football team. I know that. Um, again, good morning. Hi from Kiev. Rivna, hello. Never been, but really want to go. Nice to see you too. Hi, Zhitomir. Donetsk region, hello. Good to see you. Yeah. Bravari, hi. Kiev, Chenikiv. Hello, Irpin, oh, Varash, Rivna, hello, Kiev, good to see you, uh -huh. something is wrong with Mike, uh -huh. uh -huh. is that better, can you hear me now, sound is okay, sound is okay, not okay, Hello, Odessa. Hi. Hello. Hello. No sound. Uh -huh. Hello, Zhitomir. Hello, Chenemos. Chenemos, just around the corner. Hello. Hello. Khmenilski. It's difficult to say, but hi. Hi, Kharkiv. I hope it's as, uh, the weather's as good as it is here. A bit cold here, to be honest, but, you know. Hello, hi. Uh huh. Her son again. Hello, just round the corner from Odessa. Uman, not far away. Very nice park in Uman. Hello, Kiev. Lviv, hello. Nijin, sunny. Yeah. Uh, Dubno, poor. Uh huh. Kiev, Karivi Rok. Hi, Lviv, Rivna. Uh huh. Harkiv University. Mm, very specific. Hello. Hello, hello from Harkiv. Uh -huh. Hi from Odessa, everyone. Uh -huh. Hi from Vinitsa. Hello. Kiev, hello again. Hello from Stru. Hello. Hi from Ternopil again. Lutz, good to see you too. Oksana. Vinitsa is here. Fantastic. All of you? Wow. Ujgorod, hello. Uh, hello, big hello there. Uh -huh. Hello from Uman, hello from Dnipropetrovsk. Kamenets Podilsky, wow, beautiful place. Hello to you. Uh -huh. Hello, Harkiv, a lot of people from Harkiv, good to see you here. Hello, Truskavets, fantastic, lovely place. Yeah, Lviv again, fantastic. Oh, somebody's written in. Ukrainian there. Uh -huh. Hello, Donetsk region again. Odessa, great to see you. You're probably just around the corner. Uh, Tanyopil, fantastic. Poltava, Rivna, fantastic. Veliki Mosti, sounds lovely, you know. Uh -huh. Tulchin, great to see you here. Good morning, how are you? How are you this wonderful but sunny but cold day? It's very sunny but cold, you're right. I'm fantastic, I hope you're good too. Janina, yeah. okay, uh, Kiev again, Chernivsi, Kiev, Kiev, oh, a lot of people from the big capital, Dnipro as well, Tanyopil, big hello there from Mariana, it's rainy in Donetsk region, I'm sorry about that, it'll get better soon, you know, greetings from Odessa, Irina, hello, Chorkiv, Ismail, I've been there, lovely place, good to see you, uh -huh. Sunny but windy in Marinette. Well, I think it was windy here last night. I think it's a bit better now. Rain is good for nature. <laughs> You're right, yes. You're right, Yanina. Yeah. Um, hello from Zaporozhna. Zaporizhna, excuse me. Sunny again. Stary Sambia. Hello, hello. Hello, Tatiana. Hello, everyone. Hello from Kiev. Sunny in, yeah, it seems to be sunny in most of Ukraine. A bit windy and a little bit rainy in some places. Hello from Kiev and hi from Odessa, everyone. Cherkasy, hello. Chernomorsk, just around the corner. It's always sunny in Chernomorsk. Cherkasy, hi from Kiev, hello. Fastiv again, yeah. Her son is sunny, fantastic, good news. Hello from Bucha, ooh. 
I don't know where that is, but it sounds exotic. How are you, Svetlana? I'm fine. Great. Thank you. Still healthy. Hope you're good too. Ivan Frankivsk. Hello, Krop. Oh, this is the one I can't say. Kropotnivsky or something like that. Vinitsa again. Okay. Hi, Vinitsa. Harkiv. Snow in the morning. My God. You know, apparently in Odessa region there was snow, but uh, not so much, nothing in the center of Odessa. Yeah. From Village with a very long day name. Hello. Chona Platova Kopot Top Districts in Sumi. Hello. Hello, Vinitsa again. Good to see you. Osokorki. Great to see you too. Mukachevo. Excellent. Poltava. Lovely. Never been to Poltava, but really want to go. Yeah. Uh, Sumi, hello, 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 yeah. Uh, you really love my seminars, thank you very much, Natalia. Uh -huh. uh, I, I understand you must have attended a few of them, yeah. Uh, hello from Lviv, hi Lviv, great to see you. Jitomir, brilliant, hi. Hello, hello. Marhanets, fantastic, hello. Uh, Borislav region, uh, Borislav in Lviv region, hello. Kharkiv region, Lozova, hello. Hello from Kiev. Hi, Kiev. Uman again, fantastic. I've never been to Uman, but I've been through it many times on the way to Kiev, you know. Uh -huh. Usually for um, Cheburiki. <laughs> um, hi from Kiev. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very good sound and video today. Excellent. Good news. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Boris Paul again. Ismail again, fantastic. Good to see you guys in Odessa region. Hope it's not snowing. Uh, Chernihiv, fantastic. Poltava, mm -hmm. Poznan, excellent. Lutsk, good to see you. Sumi, Uman Park, Sofia. I know I should visit it. I know, I know. I've been here 10 years. Every year I say I'm going to visit it. But, uh, uh, everything is perfect, Frank. Fantastic. Her song, excellent. Okay. All right. Uh, uh. Ludmila Damianko Kiev, yes. You got very big writing, Ludmila. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> you like my mood and fantastic positivity. Excellent. Yes, fantastic. Privyat from Konotop Konotopa. Yeah. Hello to you. Dolinska, great. Kiev, fantastic. Nizhin, Zaporozhne. Pereslav. Wow, there's some very exotic sounding places there that I've never visited, but they sound fantastic, you know. Again, this name I struggle to say, Kropotnivsky, I think. Uh, yeah, exactly. Different parts of Ukraine, but everyone's friendly, yeah. From the first capital of Ukraine, what's that one there? Hello from Odessa, hello. The first capital, Kharkiv. Hello, hello everyone, hi. Hello, nice to see you too, Lu Lydia. Uh -huh. Kalush. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Svetlana. Hello. Cherkasy, big shout out to Cherkasy. Okay, Tanyopil, hello. Okay, just a couple more minutes, guys, and then we'll make a start. Uh, good to see you. Hi, Zaporozhye. Slavuta, Jutomir, uh -huh. excellent. Uh -huh. No sound, no video. Mm -hmm. Hello from Rivna, hi from Krivirok. Hello from Kiev, hello, hello. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you have some problems, just wait a minute or two, but it will get better. It takes a while after you've logged in, I believe. Hello from Tanyopu. Okay, uh -huh. I wish a good job for all. Yes, me too, Ludmilla. Yeah. Hi from Paltava. Hello. Stri. Interesting name. Dnipro, big shout out. Hi. Tatiana in Dnipro. Good to see you. Lviv, hello again. Good to see so many people from different regions, you know. Excellent news. Lutsk, hi. 
Western Ukraine, big shout out to Western Ukraine. You can see and hear, thank God, you know. Hi from Kamenets Podilsky, hello. Kamenets Podilsky, I've been to the castle there, beautiful place, lovely. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Ludmila Demyanko, hello. Novirod, Chernihiv, Lviv, hi everyone. Cherkasy again. Hi everyone in Cherkasy. Kamenitsky, difficult to say, but big big shout out to you. Hi. Lviv again. Zaporozhye greets me. Thank you very much. Sosnivka, fantastic. Hello. Hi, Kropotnivsky. So many of you out there. So pleased you could join me uh, on such a nice day. You know. Uh huh. Check us here. Uh huh. Okay. Hello, hello. Odessa again. Hi. Melitopol. Okay. Tatiana. Yeah. Uh -huh. Zaporozhna. Ostrov. Mm hmm. Sun again. Bravari. Uh huh. Fantastic. Hi from Kiev. Hello. Hello, Hannah. Oh, that's an interesting name. Iza Iziaslav Khmelnytsky. Oh, difficult for me to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lviv region. Good to see you. Kharkiv. Hello again. Good to see many, so many people from Kharkiv. Tanyopil again. Ozitsia. Fantastic. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, all right, we're gonna start. Okay, I'm just waiting for everyone to log in and make sure the sound is okay. All right, so uh, I've said enough hellos to you. Um, I'll say hello now, it's, it's great. So my name's Graham, I'm from, uh, from Dinternal uh, and also from the London School of English in Odessa. It's great to see you all and keep saying hello. Okay, this is a part of a series of webinars that I'm sure you've been following by all our um, methodologists. Uh, they will continue for the next week or so. I really hope you join us, okay? Uh, and today, we're gonna talk about um, culture. The, the title of my um, webinar is More Than Just Language, Making Use of Culture Sections of Course Book. So, the beginning, we're gonna talk a bit about um, culture in general. Uh, and then we're going to move on to looking at how, uh, how one of our course books deals with culture for the students, you know. Okay. Um, my name is Graham Jones. Um, as I've already said, I work for Dinternal and the London School of English. I'm the director of the London School of English in Odessa. I've been here about 10, well, over 10 years now in your fantastic country. Uh, and it's great that you've joined me uh, here today. Um, to listen to me and hopefully we can have a little bit of dialogue with the chat box. That would be fantastic. Okay. All right. So, okay. What's also very important, as I'm sure you guys know, is you will get a certificate for, of attendance uh, for this. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, all the certificates will be sent to you, uh, but they might take up to a week to get there because obviously we've got so many people joining us in these webinars and we have to send them out and prepare the webinar. So just be patient for your certificate. But I know in Ukraine how you love uh, certificates. Um, so don't worry, you will be getting it. You know? Okay. Um, all right, so today, as I've already said, we're going to talk about um, more than just language and culture in general. So, okay, when we learn a second language, um, what actually is important for the majority of learners? Well, of course, um, the most important thing generally is Lexis, okay? Uh, what they need to, they want to know words. If you don't have words, it's very difficult to speak, yeah? Okay, so words and lexis are generally what's what's probably the most important thing when you're learning a second language. You want to know words and what they mean and how to use them. Yeah, vocabulary. Yeah. So, um, of course, grammar, especially in Ukraine, people love grammar here. That's what I found. And grammar is also um, very important. It's like the skeleton of the language. People say the words are the flesh or the skin, and the, the grammar is the skeleton of the language. So without grammar, it's very difficult to be understood, to, to speak in a coordinated way. And of course, pronunciation. If no one can understand you, uh, then it's the, it's, it's the little point of speaking. Yeah? Of course, what's also important 
well, speaking, yeah, developing speaking skills is usually the top of most people's agenda when it comes to learning a foreign language. I know from my experience here in Ukraine that when people come to the London School of English, they often say, I want to improve my uh, speaking. You know, that's what they want, first of all. Of course, with speaking comes listening, because uh, as well as speaking, you also have to listen to people uh, as well. So listening is very important, maybe one of the most difficult skills. Then we've got reading. And of course, usually, unfortunately, in some ways, at the bottom of people's list is uh, writing. OK, um, it seems to be becoming a little bit less and less important, but of course, it's still important for international exams and for applications for jobs, etc., etc. But what else is important when learning a second language? I'm going to throw that question out to you guys. What else is important? Culture. Interesting. You should say that. Stamina. Fantastic answer. Yes, you need to have a lot of stamina. Don't give up. Uh, culture, culture, culture. Motivation. Fantastic. Social etiquette, which is connected to culture. Standards. Fantastic. Desire. Excellent answer. Hard work. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Practical appointment. Traditions. We're getting there. Wish. Good. Yeah. You need to want to learn the language. Okay. Communication skills. Yeah. Learning skills. Excellent. The teacher. Good answer. Yeah. Without a decent teacher, it's difficult to learn. Good memory. Yeah. Sometimes we overlook this point. Good memory is important uh, for learning a language. Practice, practice, practice. This is what I always say to my students, you know, without practice. Okay. Uh, teacher again, self-education. Yeah. You need to be able to work uh, autonomously. Yeah. Okay, and the possibility to learn, yeah, if you don't have, have the opportunity. Okay, all right, all right, excellent answers, guys, fantastic. You're thinking along the same lines as me. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, what you can see here is um, what I've come up with. Now, it's can anybody know what these um, what this word should say that's written here with the gaps? And I have an example: a tone of voice. Anybody know what this could be? Polylinguistic. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Yeah. Anybody? Features is the second word. Well done. Yeah, Lubov. Excellent. Yeah. But what about the first word? Any ideas? Oh, excellent. Yevgenia. Fantastic. Paralinguistic features. Okay, so paralinguistic features. So these are the features. Uh, of learning a language that are outside the language, okay? So, for example, tone of voice, so how you speak, you know, whether it's whispering or whether it's husky, like Barry White, for example, a very famous singer who is famous for his husky voice, you know? Um, what is interesting here is that a lot of, um, a lot of, um, uh, British or Americans or native speakers, when they come to Ukraine and they join the school, uh, as teachers, they often say, wow, Ukrainians tend to have quite a flat tone, you know, and the classic, the classic, you know, the do, 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 you know, like a, sort of a criminal in a James Bond film, a little bit, you know. So the tone for sometimes when I'm drilling intonation with Ukrainians in my class, um, it can be quite funny for them to try and mimic my and practice using intonation that's a little bit more up and down, you know? So that's important, the tone of the voice, okay? Uh, now also what else is important is physical paralinguistic features, okay? Um, so for example, okay, we've got facial expression, okay? Now facial expression, I mean, people often say I'm a little quite expressive with my face, maybe that's because I'm a teacher, and I've got used to it, yeah? Um, but yeah, facial expressions, I mean, a lot of them are similar in a lot of cultures, a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of cultures, a lot of countries. But for example, from my experience of living in Asia, I know that a smile does not always mean that you are, um, that you are happy. It could mean that you are just embarrassed or shy or something like that. Whereas in most Western cultures, a smile tends to mean that you're happy, okay? Again, People in Ukraine tend to have quite a neutral facial expression when they are on walking around the street, um, which again is something quite different 
for teachers, new teachers to, to Ukraine when they arrive here and they think, oh, why does everyone look so sad? And I'm like, they're not sad, they just, that's their facial expression, you know? Okay. Um, also, uh, we've got gesture. Now, again, a lot of gestures are similar in, um, in, in, in a lot of languages, okay? For example, we have the shoulder shrug, meaning, you know, I don't really understand or I don't care or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or I don't know, which is again in Ukrainian and British and American culture. Um, they also have the, um, you have the sort of crazy one, you know, which is in a lot of cultures, okay, okay, that type of thing. Of course, what you have here in Ukraine, which is that always makes me laugh, is that one which is um, always, uh, oh, of course, the thumbs up, but that one, yeah, is, <laughs> is uh, something that uh, British, Americans, Australians, New Zealanders were just like, uh -huh, what on earth is that, you know? So it's very, a lot of Ukrainians don't realize what that, what that, that we don't understand that, okay? Now, a gesture in, in um, British culture, I think it's only British culture that's very interesting and actually very offensive, so I won't show you this gesture, is, if we do that, now, of course, you all know this because it's on a million photographs on Instagram, okay? Uh, but, of course, it's, it can mean peace or victory, as some people are saying. Now, I'm not going to do it, but if you turn around your fingers, okay, and wave them at someone, it's actually very offensive, okay? I can't show you, but just imagine this, but turned around, you know? So it, it's actually a very offensive gesture for British people, okay? As I said, Americans, I don't think they have this, but British people have it. Now, it's interesting, what is the history of this gesture? Yeah, it's like the middle finger one, thank you very much, Yaroslav, um, but with two fingers, yeah. But it, it, the history of this, uh, according to the story, is it comes from our one of our wars with France, you know, the British, we were always fighting France in the past, and we even had a, a war called the Hundred Years' War because it went on for so long. And what happened is our most deadly soldiers, the ones who could kill the French most, uh, most efficiently, were the guys with the, the long bow, you know, the bow and arrow, firing at people, you know, a bit like Robin Hood. And of course they used, so a bit like this, these guys, yeah, okay. And of course they used their two fingers here to fire the arrow, okay? And um, the, now, the, of course, when the French caught these people, they chopped off these two fingers uh, so they couldn't, you know, fire the arrow anymore, okay? And of course, so the story has, the British soldiers used to wave these two fingers at the French in order to show that they still have the two fingers and they could continue to try to kill them, you know? So it was a sort of abuse saying, ha ha, look, I've got my two fingers and, um, <laughs> and I can still fire an arrow at you, okay? Um, yeah, so that is apparently the history of this gesture. Now, do you think this is actually true or it's just a myth? <laughs> a lot of people saying true, myth, 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 myth. Well, actually, it's a great story. It shows a lot about our uh, history and culture, but it is a myth, apparently, okay? Nobody really knows where this two-finger gesture comes from. It's a fantastic story, but it's probably not true, unfortunately, you know? It's a good one to tell people. Now, moving on, of course, proximity, when we get back to physical paralinguistic features, is how close you stand to people, okay? Uh, now, again, uh, if you've ever been to Britain, uh, or uh, I think America is a little bit different, but Britain, people are what we call very standoffish. You know, we don't really, like, in these times of social distancing, it's probably helping us, but we have always been quite, like, we don't like physically touching strangers quite often, you know? If you look at, uh, for example, the London... Uh, underground here, you can see that people are quite, you know, they, if somebody touches you by accident on the London Underground, usually both people apologize. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, so uh, it's very much don't touch me. Whereas uh, a lot of cultures, Ukrainian one, in my opinion, 
is a little bit in the middle, but Ukraine, you know, Ukrainians are a little bit closer, a little bit more tactile, a little bit touchy, not as tactile as uh, it, it, yeah, permanent social distancing, you're right, but not as tactile as Georgians or uh, Italians, for example, but somewhere in the middle. So that's something interesting to know about British people, you know. Um, Americans a little bit more tactile. Posture, so how you stand, how you walk, I don't think there's anything particularly different there. And echoing, now echoing is when you repeat what the person you're talking to has said, uh, or um, I'm going out on Saturday, or you're going out on Saturday, you know, so echoing what the person has just said. Of course, it could be to, oh, you're going out on Saturday. It could be to show interest, okay? It could be actually to make fun, you're going out on Saturday, uh -huh. you know, so it has different meanings according to how you say it, you know? So again, in some cultures, there is no echoing, some cultures, a lot of echoing, and some, you know, and some cultures, something in the middle, you know? Okay, so um, these are all what we call paralinguistic features. Now, the question is, so paralinguistic linguistic features are all connected to culture, of course, because they are, you know, different in different cultures. Should we teach these? Should we actually teach these in the classroom? That's a question I want to throw out to you guys. Uh -huh. Oh, a lot of yeses here. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wow, good. Everybody's saying yes, of course. Interesting. Yes, yes, of course. Very important. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, sure. No. Oh, have we got one now? It disappeared very quickly. Uh, but most people, we have to start. Yeah, not a bad, not a bad answer there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of course, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it seems like 98% of people are saying yes. Now, my answer is, well, yes, but no. It depends. Okay. Um, now, the reason I think in some ways no is because uh, in some cultures they are very similar as we talked about posture, okay, and a lot of gestures, they're quite similar in a lot of cultures. But, uh, and also uh, if you only have three hours a week of uh, language studies, then obviously you could argue that, you know, lexis, grammar, they're more important than the gestures, okay. Um, but on the other hand, why I think yes, it is important, because it's interesting for students. What's interesting is also motivating, okay? Learners might also visit uh, another country or even live in another country, and it will stop them becoming embarrassed or embarrassing someone else if they know a little bit about these uh, paralinguistic features. Or they might just not be so confused at the beginning, you know? Why are people not, um, you know, touching each other? What's wrong? You know? And of course, the most important thing I think is that if you learn about the culture, uh, it motivates you to learn about the language, okay? Paralinguistic features very much part of the culture, so, you know, it's in, it does motivate you. A little example, when I came to Ukraine 10 years ago, I was really into the culture um, and, you know, the food and the, the history, etc. You know, I read a lot of books and the history of Odessa, and it motivated me to get my Russian <laughs> and a little bit of Ukrainian up to you know, at least to in, around about, you know, a week intermediate. When I went to China, I was in China for two years and, you know, I wasn't so interested in, uh, in at least um, the, the culture uh, and everything. And my, my language barely got above survival level, you know. So there was a little example about me, you know. So it really helps an interest in the culture. It, take, you take, it helps you to develop your language skills, you know. Okay. Um, so um, now... Another question I'm going to, we're talking a lot about culture. I want to ask you, what exactly is culture? What do we mean? Now, to help you, I want to show you this. Okay, so can you again write in your answers? What are these? What is connected to culture here? Okay. Uh, history, very good. Uh -huh. Literature, excellent. Uh -huh. Everything, yeah. Art, fantastic. Uh -huh. Traditions, art, food, yes, okay. Social behavior, architecture. Uh -huh. Very good. Many aspects, food, food, fantastic, guys. Well done. So, as you can see, well, we got history. Obviously, I've already told you um, about something connected to, to the history, how our traditions and 
uh, in some ways gesture might come from history. We've got literature, of course, books. Uh -huh, they're very important. We have a, a lot of a rich history of uh, books in England. Art, okay. Lifestyle, how people actually live. You know, of course, in Spain, the lifestyle is very different um, to, to, to in Britain. You know, food, we're going to talk about food a bit more later. I hope you've eaten breakfast because you're going to get hungry. Architecture, very, uh, very, very interesting. The architecture shows all the influences from different countries and perhaps who your country has been colonized by or by being taken over by. And social behavior, how people behave towards each other. You know, I, I'm sure there's more as well. Fashion, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sense of humor, excellent, you know, um, is very important, you know. Uh, yeah, humor, I, I find Ukrainian and British humor not too different, to be honest, you know. Uh, we have a little bit of a dark humor, each of us, I think. Uh, but there are many differences there, you know. Okay, so religion, of course, yeah, does play a big part in culture, of course, you know. So moving on, now, why is all this important? Why is culture important. What about the words? What about the grammar? Well, okay, because culture and language are actually inseparable. You can't separate them. They are very much connected. Where does the language come from? It all comes from history, from culture, from everything like that, okay? So if you look here, so what I've come up with here, we've got culture and language connected to traditions of a country, uh, common sayings or proverbs, and how you talk to people, how you address people. So the first one I'm going to look at here, we've got the traditions. Now, what's this guy doing here? Okay, you probably would move away from him. Well, he's, yeah, of course, he's sneezing. Okay, now what do you say when someone sneezes? Of course, you say, bless you. Okay, so, uh -huh. now you say, bless you. Now, of course, um, in Ukraine, it's almost compulsory, almost obligatory to say, bless you. Okay, when someone sneezes, I notice about 17 people in the teacher's room say, bless you, bless you, bless you. In Britain, this is not such a tradition. We don't say it so much, okay? And of course, in Ukraine, when people say, bless you, you have to say, thank you. OK, again, in Britain, my wife was shocked when uh, when someone sneezed. She said, bless you. And nobody said thank you. You know, uh, why aren't they saying thank you? Well, we don't say thank you. We say thank you a lot, but not here. You know, so that's just a little bit traditions. Bon appetit again uh -huh, um, is another one that, again, is very much uh, compulsory. If I'm eating again in the teacher's room here, about uh, 16 teachers say, Bon appetit or, or something like that, you know. Again, in England, it's not such a tradition. People don't really say much, you know. When you're eating, they maybe say, what are you eating? What have you got? Oh, that looks nice. Can I have some, you know. But they don't necessarily say, um, you know, bon appetit again, you know. In fact, people often say, what do I say? You can say bon appetit if you want, but it's not really uh, help yourself. That's a good thing to say. Um, and cheers. Now, cheers is a very interesting one, how it's developed in the last you know, couple of decades. Because cheers, of course, is when you drink, when you celebrate, you know, people usually say cheers. But uh, in Britain now, it's become to mean uh, also thank you. You know, so when you buy something, you say, OK, cheers, see ya. And it can also mean goodbye, you know, cheers. You know, so cheers is really developing over time, the meaning of it, you know, okay. Um, and also, yeah, I mean, I haven't put it here, but the tradition in England of saying thank you so many times, but not really meaning it, you know. Uh, and also the tradition of when people say, uh, how are you? You're not supposed to give an honest answer. So, yeah, fine, not bad, you know, whereas in Ukraine, most people say, oh, you know, could be better or actually my back's hurting or something like that again in britain you just say not bad fine thanks you know so, uh, don't expect an honest answer when you ask british people how are you you know now moving on to common sayings and proverbs we have some interesting uh, stories here so um when uh, two when the bill comes uh, at the end of a restaurant especially if it's a man and a woman okay of course, in uh, in Ukraine, the tradition is, although maybe it's changing, is that the uh, the man pays, you know, for the bill. A little bit different in Britain. In Britain, we usually split the bill. 
Now, does anybody know uh, an, an idiom that we can use for splitting the bill? Or, okay, excellent. Here we have to go Dutch. Okay. Uh huh. So if you look in, in there, yeah, to go Dutch. So you can say, shall we go Dutch? Meaning, shall we uh, split the bill? Now, of course, you might be thinking, why Dutch? Well, British people, I mean, uh, we think that Scottish people and Dutch people, people from Holland, are not very um, generous with their money. You know, it's true about Scottish people, actually, but I don't know about the Dutch very much. But the, again, this, uh, this idiom to go Dutch comes from our history. Again, it's again, it comes from war because one of our wars we had in the 17th century was with Holland, with the Dutch people, and it came from this, you know, the idiom to go Dutch. The wars were connected to trade, to money, you know, so that's why we have such an idiom. Now, also this phrase here, Bob's your uncle. Now, this one is not a very well-known one, I don't think, but it sort of means, and there you go, okay, or there you have it, you know. Usually you can use it when you're talking about a recipe. Uh, for example, I made banana cake at the weekend. Somebody said, how did you make it? I said, it was easy. You just mashed up some bananas, sugar, flour, eggs, put it in the oven, one hour, and Bob's your uncle, you have banana bread, you know? So this one, again, it's a very nice, you know, it means like in French say, and voila, you know? Maybe you guys say, et vote, you know, or something like that. But um, yeah, Bob's your uncle, it's like here and there you go. So the history of this is, again, it's about, comes from, uh, from British politics and it, it goes back to a prime minister we had in, in the 19th century called Robert. The short name for Robert in, in England is Bob. And he gave a job, one of the top jobs in politics, I believe the, one of the minister, minister jobs, he gave to his nephew. Okay, so the phrase Bob's your uncle came from that, you know, as in, uh-huh, and there you go, you know, Bob's your uncle, you know, okay. An Englishman's home is his castle, one of our famous ones. Again, it comes from a little bit from our um, history of like, this is my house, uh, and British people tend to not to, you know, be so welcoming. We tend to do a lot of meetings in pubs or in bars rather than in our homes. That's why we say, you know, it's like a castle, our house. It's difficult to get into, you know. So, yeah, an Englishman's home is his castle is, is, is again, connected to our traditions. And, and, of course, castles are very popular in Britain, you know. So, uh, okay. And ways to address people. Well, um, we have, you know, of course, um, interestingly, at school, I used to call our teacher, if they were male teachers, we said, sir, you know, and if they were female teachers, even if they were uh, older and married, we still said, miss, miss, you know, can I leave the room, you know, so we had quite formal at school. Um, and of course, when writing a letter to someone you don't know, uh, you should put sir or madame, you know, not just sir, because that is sexist, <laughs> you know, you should put sir, madame. Uh, before you send the letter, you know. Um, but actually, how we address people in Britain is actually quite informal uh, in spoken English. You know, you usually say, you usually just call them by their first name. You know, uh, even if it's your boss, you don't usually say Mr. Jones or something like that. Is very very formal. You just say Graham or something like that. Okay, ma'am. Somebody's writing ma'am here to address people again. That's I think that's from the south southern states of America. They say this, but not in Britain so much. Yeah. Uh, Muz, again, can be used if, if you don't know if someone's married or not, you know. Okay. Uh, all right. So as you can see, culture and language very much connected there, you know. Okay. So learning about the, the, the country and the traditions in your lessons or reading books, it creates a meaningful context. So the context, as we know, is very important for learning a language. Okay. So context is what culture brings. Now, learning about the cultural background, it allows you to use the right words in the right situation. You might know the words, but if you don't know when to use them, it, you could easily make mistakes, you know? So that's very important. And the culture really helps there, you know? Okay, it makes it easier. I find if you know the history of a word or a phrase, it really makes it easier to remember the Lexis. And if you remember the Lexis, 
and you don't pause when you speak, then it allows you to think in another language. Now, this is always what people say to me. The key to really fluency and coherence is really thinking in the target language, okay? Not translating in your head, but, you know, speaking, um, you know, uh, without doing that. So, okay, well, the culture really helps and contributes to this, okay? Now, so what's the best way to learn about the culture, guys? What's the best way? Visit, yes, excellent. Video, very good. We're coming to that later. Yeah. Reading, again, excellent. Okay. Uh, dating, interestingly, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, video books, friends, good. Okay. Visit communication. All right. All fantastic answers, basically the same as what I've got here. So as you can see, well, yeah, we've got visiting another country or living in another country is the best way to do it okay the internet good bbc news okay but not everybody speaks like the people on bbc news that's true uh books very good as you can see here there are some old ones jane austen charles dickens okay please if possible also read some more modern books which show you more about modern Britain, you know, something by Zadie Smith, for example, is a very good uh, portrayal of modern Britain, you know, right? These books are excellent for showing about our history, but try and find some more modern books as well. And of course, another way you can learn about the culture, which we're going to look at at the second part of my uh, webinar, is in the classroom, okay? So um, now what we're going to look at, we're going to look at uh, how we, the, the Go Getter series of books approaches um culture okay because in go getter as i can hold it here to show you that i've got it uh, in go getter there are culture sections of the course book between the modules each of the go getter series has this okay and the go getter culture series which are called get culture we have everything there reading listening projects and video okay and uh, now video is, of course, included in more and more books these days because the classrooms are becoming more and more uh, technologically advanced. OK, and even you can watch them at home or on a telephone or anything like that. OK, so, OK, we are going to watch uh, a video, a part of a video from Go Getter. The video is connected to British food. Now, please don't laugh. OK, everybody laughs about British food, uh, but actually we have a, a, a rich history of British food, as you'll see, mainly connected to our um, history and our colonies and immigration and everything like that, okay? British food is not as bad as you think, you know? Um, so as you can see here, we're going to watch a video. Uh, we're not going to watch all of it. We're going to watch a short clip about British uh, takeaway food, okay? Now, as you are watching, I just want you to answer two questions. Uh, we're going to look. Uh, we're going to watch the video about fish and chips, uh, the most famous, I think, British food and the most unhealthy, probably. Um, and are fish and chips easy to make? And would you like to eat it? Okay, those are the two questions I want you to answer uh, when we watch uh, the video. Okay, so here we go. Mm -hmm. People in the UK spend over £30 billion a year on takeaways. The UK has the most takeaway restaurants in the whole of Europe. Today, many people work long hours and have longer to travel to and from their jobs. People have less time to cook, so takeaway food is a popular choice. British people have enjoyed fish and chips for over 150 years. The first fish and chip shops, or chippies, opened in the 1860s. Let's find out how to make fish and chips. First, make a batter with flour, salt and water. Then dip pieces of white fish in it. Fry the fish in very hot oil until the batter is crispy. Chips are easy. 
peel and chop the potatoes and fry them. And you mustn't forget to add salt and vinegar. Okay, so what do you think? Are fish and chips easy to make and would you like to eat it? Is it good for health? Not really. <laughs> Looks good, yeah. You've eaten it. I hope you you hope you enjoyed it. You know, you'd like to try. Me too. To be honest, watching that video made me really hungry. You know, because it looked really good. I think. You know. So, are fish and chips easy to make? Actually, yes. If you have all the right equipment, they're pretty easy to make. Would you like to eat it? I think most of you can say would say yes. You can make it at home. That's true. Yeah. You have. I mean, the the dish. You can make anywhere, I think. You need one of those deep fat fryers, you know, to make it. It is junk food a little bit. Did anybody know what the green stuff was? The green stuff. We had fish, chips, and some green. Anybody know what the green was? <laughs> peas, yes, it was peas, very good. The peas are what we call mushy peas because they're all mushed, you know? Um, and it's very much part of... Um, part of the experience to have the mushy peas with your fish and chips, you know? Okay, uh, all right, so fish and chips. So, as we can see, the videos here, the BBC videos, are very much a part of the Go-Getter books, you know? All of them authentic, all of them with real presenters, okay? So, um, as we can see, um, authentic BBC material, BBC presenters, a convenient length. In the books, they're about three minutes, the videos. And the good news is um, that the tasks are already prepared for you. So it's not like you have to find a video on YouTube and prepare the tasks yourself, which usually takes a long time, and you only use it once in class, okay? But the tasks are already in the book for you to use. So the videos are very much a key part of the cultural sections of Go Getter. Okay, and just to quickly tell you that we will have more go-getter stuff from the 21st of April to the 4th of May. We'll be having more seminars and we have 500 books of go-getter to give away. Okay, but I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, all right, so um, going on now, my top tip, I'm going to give you some top tips for using the books and for doing activities in general, my top tip for videos is when you first, because usually you watch the videos two or three times, the first time you watch the video, show them an easy task, give them an easy task to do so they can watch the video. If you give them a difficult task, they tend to be like this, looking at the questions and the answers and they don't watch the video. Remember, it's a video, not a, not a recording. So they need to just give you an easy task like I gave you, okay, the first time. So, okay, uh, an easy task is a good idea for the first time you watch, okay? Make sure they're watching, all right? All right, moving on. Now, we also, as you can see here, we have the reading section. Um, the reading and listening section. Now this, as you can see, is some food to try in the UK. You probably never heard of any of these. Uh, for example, we have A is Welsh rarebit, which is basically cheese on toast. Scottish shortbread, this is biscuits. Uh, very tasty, but a little bit fattening. Uh, Yorkshire pudding, I'm from Yorkshire. Okay, so this is part of my culture. Um, it's not a pudding as such, it's not sweet. It's basically like batter, as you saw in the fish and chips, and you put it in the oven and it rises. Very tasty. Uh, we have Brighton Rock, which is basically sugar, a stick of sugar. You know, we have Stilton cheese, or oh, delicious teas. British cheese is very tasty. And we have Stargazi pie, which I have to admit I've never heard of, but it's from Cornwall. I'm from Yorkshire. Cornwall is very, very far from uh, from Yorkshire, so I've never heard of them. Have you tried any of these guys? Do you know any of these uh, British dishes? No. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I recommend Stilton cheese, especially. It's a blue cheese. If you like blue cheese, it's very tasty, you know. Um, I think, yeah, you can buy British cheese in Silpo. I know that, you know, you can buy ch British cheddar. Uh, it's very good. British cheese is excellent. I strongly recommend British cheese, you know, it's very strong flavor, yeah. Okay, all right, next time I go to Britain, guys, I'll bring you back some Brighton Rock so you can destroy your teeth. It's very tasty, but yeah, it's, it's not good for your teeth, you know? Okay, of course, also here we have a lot of, what's not mentioned here, British food has a lot of food from China, from India, and places like this, you know? And of course, now a lot of food from Poland because we have a lot of Polish immigrants in Britain, you know, and even, don't worry, we have some Ukrainian food too, you know. Um, okay, so um, listening, as you can see here, we have uh, a couple of listening sections. We have true-false. Uh, we have also circle the correct answers, okay. Um, all right, so um, with listening, what I like about the, the go-getter is you can read and listen at the same time, okay. Uh, so you read the text and you listen to it as well. This is very good for the pronunciation, so you can hear the words pronounced, okay? Uh, excellent way of, of, of raising your awareness of pronunciation. Also, um, students can, uh, when, when they do the listening, they're not listening to old people like me talking. They're listening to um, uh, people who are the same age. So Go Getter is aimed at like 9 to 13-year-olds, and the people in the in the text, um, they listen to, you know, nine to 13 year olds when speaking, talking about their experiences. Uh, so that's a good thing. They have different types of listening tasks and they have post listening discussion questions, which is what I like. So the students have the opportunity to discuss for example, do, would you like to try this food? Why, why not, you know? These type of things gives the students an opportunity to talk, you know? So again, I'm gonna go on to a top tip about any anything you could do with listening tasks to make the task a little bit more challenging. Is there anything you could do with true-false tasks uh, with students that are a high level? You have a strong group, what could you do with that, anything? True, false, listening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing you could do with the true, false, okay, is my top tip. You could ask them to make the false sentences true, okay? So when you listen, first time you listen, just put true or false. Second time you listen, make the false sentences true. So for example, Welsh rabbit is very difficult to make. False, Welsh rabbit is actually very easy. So this will help you with stronger students or stronger groups, you know, because sometimes you can just guess true or false, true or false. But here it really develops their listening skills, okay? All right, now also what I like about the Go-Getter series is at the end of each culture uh, section, there is a, a project which are very good for children of this age, nine to 13, uh, with food, uh, as you can see here, you have language to help them, okay, is popular. Here they have to do a project about different food from different regions of Ukraine, perhaps, okay. Um, so yeah, the, you can talk about, you know, as you can see here, they've got language to use, and you, they also do, they can do the presentation, using computers, using screens, using interactive workbook, whiteboards. So it's quite a modern way if you have the facilities, okay? So projects, again, um, any ideas you have for projects out there? Have you tried anything that really worked with projects with this age group or with, even with older age groups? Mm -hmm. Involving activities, recipe making, nice, I like it, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, okay, uh-huh, good, 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 yeah. Yeah, recipes, good posters, excellent. Yeah, I really like posters because they can get to see what they've done. They can show them to their parents. Pair work, excellent, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, uh, filmmaking, excellent. National cuisine, excellent, yeah, yeah. So yeah, with projects, I mean, for me, the projects, they're really good because they encourage the students to work autonomously, yeah? They can work in groups, small groups or in pairs. They are communicative, they have to talk to each other. They develop their computer skills if you choose to do it that way. 
creativity, of course, it's not just about the language with projects. It also encourages these uh, life skills such as creativity that are very important these days in, in Ukraine. You know, there is a clear end result. OK, there is an, a communicative outcome, the presentation. You can show the parents, for example. Yeah. OK. And it's very collaborative. They can practice planning and working in a team, which is fantastic. Teamwork, again, very much part of life skills for uh, this age group. OK. Now, again, my top tip number one, I've got two for projects. Give when you when before the students give their uh, presentation to the whole group, give them the opportunity to do the presentation just with one of a group. OK, and as a teacher, you can monitor and help them and give them advice, because this will mean that their presentation, when they do it the second time, it'll be better, we hope. OK, so give them the opportunity to practice. Second top tip, um, have a vote at the end of the uh, of the presentations. Vote, get the class to vote which present, which project was best. OK, this will make sure there is a communicative uh, result to your presentation so there is some clear you know who is the best you know but try and make it positive you know which one was they were all good but this one was the best you know so a vote at the end is a good idea you know okay so okay also just a little bit more about the cultural sections of go-getter they show different aspects of different cultures not only British this uh, is a this uh, reading text is about David Attenborough. Does anybody know David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough? Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, he's very famous, very old. He does a lot of documentaries about wildlife. Very, very um, famous voice. I can't do his voice, but everyone in Britain recognizes his voice. Very interesting text about him. We also have texts about uh, America, about geography in America. Okay, it's not just about Britain. Uh, we also have texts about Australia, interesting and unusual places to visit. Okay, so it's about all sort of target language cultures. Okay, so what about if you're not a native speaker? You might be thinking, but wait a minute, how do I uh, tell my students about culture if I'm not a native speaker, you know? Actually, don't worry about this too much because, from my experience, a lot of um, a lot of Ukrainian teachers that know loads about British culture know more about me than the royal family. That's for sure. Even some people I know uh, in Odessa have written to the royal family, have received um, uh, letters back. You know, so I wouldn't worry too much. You, you guys know a lot about uh, British culture, I think. You know, uh, and also the good news is, guys, that. The, the Go Get the Teacher's Book does show you some cultural notes, okay? So it doesn't leave you completely empty. You have something there to help you, okay? Did they write back? I believe the royal family did write back, actually, you know? So there you go. So, yeah, so these Go Get a section, the Go Get a Teacher's Book does give you cultural notes. That's the good news, okay? So just to summarize why teach culture, well, actually, it's very much part of the language, okay? Uh, if you know more about the culture, you know more about the language. It's motivating. Students enjoy it. What's enjoyable, it helps them to learn the language, okay? It gives context to the learning, as we already said, and in that way, it makes learning easier, okay? All right, so that's Go Getter, uh -huh. okay, Go Getter and the Get Culture sections, okay, around about 9 to 13 year old age group. And as I mentioned before, uh, we're going to have more Go Getter training, we're going to have Go Getter, two weeks of Go Getter, uh, get more with Go Getter, you're going to have 10 training sessions from five experienced speakers from Dinternal. I'm sure you know some of them already. For example, I believe Chris will be doing one of the sections, very popular webinar, -er, if that's the correct word, okay? And there'll be 500 books to give away, okay? So make sure you register for that. And you will be given the opportunity to register in the link in your email when you get your certificate, okay? So guys, uh, please register for, for Go Getter um, uh, seminars. It'll be very interesting and you could win Go Getter books. OK. All right. Um, now, we're not going to give away 500 books, but we're going to give away now 20 Go Getter books. So don't go anywhere yet. We're going to have 
a lottery. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to the moderator, Natasha. She's going to use random.org to pick out some of your email addresses. Thank you for the thank yous, everyone. I'll say a big thank you in a minute after the lottery. Okay, but I'm just going to, we're going to use random.org for this. Okay, here we go. Lottery, my favorite moments. Oh, here we go. Okay, everybody pay attention. Thank you for all the thank yous. Okay, it's fantastic that you enjoyed it. Okay, but don't go anywhere yet because we have the lottery coming up. You know. Uh huh. One second. Here it comes. Uh huh. My session was interesting. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. Fingers crossed. Good idiom. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh huh. Okay. One second. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. One minute. Where is the, oh, it's gonna come any second. Fingers crossed, I'm crossing my fingers, I'm crossing my toes, I'm crossing everything, you know, for this. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. where's the lottery? Guys, you were a really great audience. Thank you for all of your uh, feedback and thank you for all of your answers when I asked you questions. It was really cool, I really enjoyed it, you know. Uh -huh. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm glad you got some great ideas, you know, because, um, you know, the, the, the tips don't only work with um, Go Getter. They work with, you know, other books as well, other projects, other listenings. It doesn't really matter. Aha! We have. Finally. Oh, it's uh, we had. Uh -huh. We had some uh, email addresses there. Okay, for the winners of the lottery. Okay, uh, but thank you. Well done, everyone. It came through very quickly. I didn't get the chance uh, to look at that. Are they going to come back? I don't know. I, you were probably, if you have very good eyesight, you probably saw it uh, coming up there. But I think they might be coming up in a minute. So show the list. We are trying to show the list. One second, one second. Congratulations to the winner. Here we go. Here we go. One second, I can see a spinny thing, uh-huh. Okay, and maybe now it's gonna be, oh, there we go. Mm-hmm, well done, all of you people. 20 books, fantastic. Oh, 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 it's still there, some of them. Uh-huh, okay, congratulations, everyone. You'll be getting go-getter, okay. Mm-hmm, fantastic. Yeah, well done. Uh -huh. Congratulations, everyone. But thank you, uh, guys. Okay, your certificates will be coming to you. Please give us one week. You were a fantastic crowd, guys. Okay, um, fantastic. You were brilliant. Um, and um, I'll see you again soon. I'm doing another, another webinar on uh, lexical approach in a couple of weeks. Okay, so I hope to see you all there again okay um and yeah and i hope you all join the go getter series okay so guys fantastic i want to say a big thank you uh once again that's fantastic this is me graham jones okay from sunny odessa thank you everyone in uh, the whole of ukraine thank you kiev nipra everyone you know lviv okay um and oh, contemporary author, somebody said Zadie Smith. That's who I recommend for the lit literature, for modern literature, Zadie Smith. She did a very famous book called White Teeth, which is all about sort of modern day London and modern day and about, you know, immigration into London, a novel. It's excellent. There we can see the winners again. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, stay safe, everyone. Thanks, Sumi. Okay uh and um yeah thank you everyone okay um and i'll see you very soon you've been great okay thank you bye 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 enjoy your wednesday uh have a great day okay all right bye bye